who's the most terrible of them all? It's Hollywood Lean. Hello and welcome to Everyone is Terrible. I'm your host, Hollywood Lean. It's my favorite day of the week. Welcome to the podcast where we discuss all the terrible things and people we see on TV. Tonight's <laughs> guest is giving me life in her new movie, Give Me Pity, actress Sophie von Hasselberg. Welcome, Sophie. Thank you. Hi. Just so happy to be here giving you life. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Um, it's a good day. Thank you for being here, Sophie. I really appreciate you. I'm so thrilled. I just can't wait to hear all of the Bravo news that I've been, you know, missing for the last 10 years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tiny bit of Bravo news for you. Some terrible TV recommendations. And of course, we're jumping in to give me pity tonight. So check that out. It's on Amazon Prime. Go check it out. It is crazy. It is a trip. It's manic. It's like psychedelic. It's paranormal. It's a Saturday night special. It's incredible. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to give my give an extra plug to the movie, which is it's also available on Apple and on yes. Roku. So, you know, wherever you get your films. Like how we met, Um, you did a movie, Love Reconsidered, produced by one of my best friends, SJ Loco. And so I went to the movie screening premiere of LA and that's where we met. Yes, exactly. Also, I can't wait for SJ to hear this. Um, SJ is so <laughs> fabulous. She's a casting director and a producer. And we made this really fun indie rom-com um, in Southampton. It'll be out there in some fashion soon. And how fortuitous that we got to meet that, that stormy night in LA. I know it was a stormy night in LA. Yes, SJ's, oh, she's fabulous. Yes, it's surprise, SJ. Look who I have on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you better um, be listening, bitch. I went to the Hamptons for the first time with SJ. So we we have a little Hamptons connection for sure out there. I love the Hamptons. God, we need to go well, back. Wait, you must, though, have loved, have loved Love Reconsidered because it has a very famous Bravo person on it, Luke Goldbranson from Summer House. Slash yes, I, House. I loved it. I loved Love Reconsidered, and Luke is so cute. And the oh, best part he is, is that he's so nice, too. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met. He's also one of, by far, one of the hottest people I've ever been in the same room with. He's stunning. He's so But then beautiful. he's almost so nice that I'm like... It almost like undercuts the handsomeness. I'm like, wait, why aren't you just being a dick? <laughs> <laughs> Watch Summer House. I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. And John Lemon, such a cutie as well. Oh my God. I know. He's the best. Such uh, a good actor and just like a, a, such a like perfect, sweet, goofy weirdo, which I just love. Yeah. I love John Lemon. After the premiere, or I think it was the night before, we went to the polo lounge and we were like, having a chocolate souffle and just like talking about the movie and about Hamptons. I was complaining a little bit about my career. <laughs> he's like, are we not? Uh, he's like, yeah. Um, okay. And I was like, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait to go to your movie tomorrow. <laughs> so he, was, he was probably like, who is this guy? No, we had a good time. Um, love reconsidered. Go check that out. It's fabulous. So when I got Sophie, uh, you know, when I asked her to do the podcast, I sent her an email and I was like, what are you watching? And she sent me a list of what she's watching. But what you don't watch is what stuck out to me because you're like, I wish I watched like shows like Swarm and Yellow Jackets, but I'm not watching that. So I was like, hold on, what is this Swarm? So then I checked it out. So Sophie gave me my terrible TV recommendation for the week, <laughs> which is go watch Swarm, you guys. It's on Amazon Prime and it's about like crazy fans i just want to say the reason why i said i am not watching those shows is because i cannot do horror i mean ironically give me pity sort of is horror but like <laughs> it just it lodges in my brain and in my imagination in a way that for weeks after i have problems sleeping so i watch like an episode of something and i'm like well this is so fucking good that there's no way i can actually watch the rest of the season um <laughs> but people love swarm glad to hear you enjoyed it <laughs> Produced by Donald Glover, Childish Gambino. What an amazing genius. Donald, we need to work together. 
I really think, honestly, it's about Beyonce fans. DM in the inbox and let me know what you're feeling. Should I cover it on the pod? Let me know. Let me know. So in Bravo news, Ariana Maddox is joining Dancing with the Stars. Obviously, she's from Vanderpump Rules. There's been a big scandal, and Tom cheated on Ariana. And it's been this whole thing where, like, the whole world is very, very vigilante. And they're like, get Tom, get Tom. So um, it's kind of scary. I'm telling everyone to calm down. Maybe everyone's been listening to the Reputation album for Taylor Swift a little bit too much. (laughs) Uh, You guys, it's a TV show. And they're just people. Let's all calm down. And something good came out of it. She's going on Dancing with the Stars, everyone. So let's just take a chill pill. Um, Would you ever go on Dancing with the Stars? You know, I don't know if I would. Okay, um, I read Jennifer Gray's memoir. How is it? Had, it's truly unbelievable. It's such good writing. She's so funny. She's so wry and smart. And she talked about her experience of Dancing with the Stars and said that it was like just the most rewarding experience. I mean, it like tore her body apart, but just that it was so rewarding to be dancing again in that way, like as a lifelong dancer. That's my favorite season. Really? Yes. Oh my like, God, she won. She cried, like, it, dedicating it to Patrick Swayze. Oh, my oh. God. It was so good. Oh, my God. I mean, it, so after reading that, I, I was like, oh, wait, maybe Dancing with the Stars is actually is the path to happiness. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I would go on. But I think at this stage in my career, it would feel pretty silly because, like, I'm not really a star star. So I think oh, I would kind of feel like an idiot being like, Dancing, you are a dancing, star. With, the, <laughs> dancing with the mini stars. Um <laughs> So if anyone out there is listening, Dancing with the Stars, Sophia said, maybe you better go pursue that, you guys. <laughs> would you go on Dancing with the Stars? I have a feeling I know the answer. I totally would go on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Just to like lose the weight, you know, lose the COVID pounds and like get back into the rhythm of movement. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Totally. You know how it is. Like we're out here in Hollywood hustling and bustling. So a job is a job. I would do it. Yes. Oh my God. Amen. A job is a job is a job. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, congratulations on the movie. It's a trip for sure. Does Sissy feel like the most important role to date? Yes, for sure. I mean, I think it's so For those of you who haven't seen the movie uh, yet, I'm hoping after this podcast, you go right out and rent it. Um, It is, it's basically a one woman show set in the seventies and eighties. And as you watch it, it's like you're watching one of those television specials, sort of like a variety show. So I play this actress, Sissy St. Clair, who's hosting her very first variety show. And as it goes on, she's sort of, my character starts to lose her grip on reality and many things happen and it starts to fall apart at the seams. Um, So I think just because of how much it required of me and how much I loved the script and everything. um, And it's really, I mean, it's the biggest role I've ever played, certainly. So yeah, it definitely feels like the most, sort of the biggest thing I've done to date and very, very exciting. It's super exciting. I watched it um, about a week ago, late at night. I took a little edible, sorry. (laughs) Nice. Good, 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 good. No, I was like, like, oh my God. God, this is crazy, creepy, and then and and then also like for full transparency, I'm writing my own my own short film right now. So after watching it, I was like, yes, let's go! Like I shouldn't be scared of the psychedelic love dancing I'm writing. <laughs> oh, totally. I mean, that is actually something that I've heard from a lot of people, and that makes me really excited. Is people being like, that movie made me want to write. Like, I think just that it's, I think Amanda Kramer, who directed and wrote it, is such a genius. And her write, her writing truly jumps off the screen. And I think it's it's sort of inspired a lot of people that I've spoken to, which, how how great is that? Yeah, it's it was definitely speaking to me in that way. Um, I've been writing late at night from like 12 to 4 in the morning. My emails are like all over the place. So people are like, why are you writing me at 3.30 in the morning? And I'm like, because I'm writing right now. I'm in the creative like space from like 12 to 4 in the morning. Um, so like after watching Give Me Pity, I was like, I'm jumping into this psychedelic love scene that I'm writing. So it's kind of cool. Great. It's about an actor who like sees his future during a psychedelic experience while watching a drag show. Wow. Okay. And does he see his experience and is it positive? Sorry, he sees his future and is it positive or is it negative? Yes, or like- it is. It is. 
it's like, you know, what we feel when something scares us. And we're like, you know, if it scares us, we should jump in because this is a good thing, you know? Yes. I feel like definitely as performers, um, when we get the butterflies, when we get nervous, when we get scared, that is a really like a green light for us intrinsically to like go for it. So I really feel like that's like, what sissy kind of gave you uh i'm assuming just because i you know i read that the project was all ready to go amanda kramer had sought you out for the role do you think that the role was written specifically for you you know i mean i think the script already existed in some form before or at least the idea existed before she and i linked up i don't think that it was tailored to me and in a way actually i think like anyone could play sissy and it would just be such a different movie with any actress or any actor um but obviously i feel she is mine um but <laughs> but yeah it wasn't it wasn't tailored to me in that way at least not that i know of got it and you know so you read the script and so what made you say yes did it give you those tingly feelings that i was kind of talking about I mean, exactly what you just said is what made me say yes. I read it. I was totally terrified because I had never sung and danced on screen. I had never led a feature film as the only actor. It's like, yeah, of course, when when the fuck would I have done that? Like broke out in a full body sweat and was like, oh, this is the sign that obviously I have to do this. Anything that scares me that much is like, yes, green light means go. Or is it maybe yes. like red light? means go i mean <laughs> your body's like this is so scary don't jump but I i'm know. so glad i did yeah. that's so cool yes it's very the audience loves me and i love them <laughs> right lots of monologues lots of songs you guys it's something that is just gonna stick out in your mind for at least the whole like a whole week i watched the trailer and i went straight to sophie when i met her and i was like okay i know we're here for love reconsidered but what the fuck? I just watched the trailer for your new movie and she was like, oh my God, the American number. Like that was incredible. Probably my favorite number, very patriotic. What did you do for to prep for the role? Because you said you've never sung and danced before on screen like that before. So what did you do to prep for this part? Um, I mean, so I, I grew up dancing. So like the dancing part, I was just really excited about. And I also knew that this woman, that this character didn't have to be an incredible dancer. So I was sort of like, whatever I can bring to the role, whatever my skills are, are going to be okay. So the dancing part, I was like, that squared away. The singing was the part that I was really nervous about because singing, do you sing at all? I do. I thought you were about to be like, I do, here we go. Um, <laughs> and there he goes, breaking into song. 90 um, degrees, I do cherish you. No, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> I do dabble in the musical arts, darling. So, I mean, I don't know if you feel this way, but singing is so naked. It's like so vulnerable and it mm -hmm. feels so intimate. So the idea that I was going to be doing that, you know, on a soundstage by myself, with like a bunch of backup dancers was was like really intimidating to me but i was like <laughs> if i can slay this dragon wow like i have tackled one of my biggest fears um so i worked really hard on the singing which was also just great because it's like i got to exercise a muscle that i hadn't really exercised in a while what's her voice like and you know all that fun all the fun stuff about being an actor i know and oh, gosh i'm so jealous of all the fun you had <laughs> You guys, she has yeah, like but... 25 costume changes. Like you wore so many different things. Um, oh, the looks are unbelievable. Oh yeah, my did God. you have like I... such a good time with that? I truly had the best time, but it was also totally shocking. Cause it's like you, you know, I'm sitting there kind of rehearsing on my own, figuring out who this character is. And then all of a sudden you get to set and they start doing things to your hair and the makeup and you're like, oh my God, oh, this is a totally different person. Or like, it's adding to the person that I thought she was. You know, there are so many different elements that then come together to create this full picture. It's so not me, you know, it's, which is fabulous. It's like, it gives you so much room to play around in. Are you gonna play the role in your short film? So I, I am gonna play the main actor who is trying to, you know, find himself and like he's not really seen in his career his home life his relationship his work life and i think as humans that's what we're looking for like we just 
want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be loved. That's what he's looking for. And he sees this drag show. He sees it on a psychedelic trip and he has this connection and it's almost like the American beauty scene where he's watching the cheerleader and it's just him and her in the auditorium. But in reality, like there's like 500 people there. So that's kind of like what it is. Like they have this connection and while they're dancing in this psychedelic trip, like he sees his future and um, you know, it kind of breaks away when the laughter, I mean, when the applause comes and it's like a very short moment, but in reality, everyone's like, who is this guy? like interrupting a drag show dancing with the drag queen but in my mind it's like this connection this like little mermaid like you know when she's taking the voice ursula's taking the voice from ariel it's like this big beautiful connection without ursula in it oh i love that idea (laughs) that sounds oh i can't wait to see that thank you thank you so um Yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. And it definitely gave me inspiration to like really go into the nitty gritty and to not be afraid of like, so who cares if there's like this aspect and who cares if like it goes really into the psychedelic trip? Um, Because that's kind of like what this movie did as well. Like you guys went into different realms. Do you believe in ghosts yourself? I do. You heard it here first. I believe in ghosts. <laughs> um, yes, I, I do believe in ghosts. I've just had too many weird experiences to not believe in them. I've I've heard them. I've been around them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the world is too crazy to not have ghosts exist. You know, Thank it's you. like, come on. <laughs> ghosts, aliens. They're all, they're exactly. all here. They're all, they're here. all here, guys. <laughs> um, it gets a little dark, you know. There's like almost like a demonic thing in the movie that happens. Like, do you do you believe that far into the spiritual realm, or you're like, I believe in ghosts, but that's about it. Or like, do you believe in good and evil? Because that's kind of like what the movie is based on. Like, there's like this evil force that kind of comes into her space. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's been really fun hearing people's different reactions to that particular element of the story because different people see it as very different things. And everybody is like sure that their version is the correct one. And I think Amanda intentionally sort of leaves it as like, there is no real correct one. It's sort of this open-ended like, is it a real thing? Is it my imagination? Is it like a demonic presence? I mean, there's certainly a presence at work, but it's like, does the audience see that person? Do only I see that person? All of that stuff. Okay, I'm I'm not like a big woo-woo person in like, uh, I'm not like into astrology. Sure, I love to read my horoscope every once in a while, but like, that's not really my thing. <laughs> there's a line in the film about about demonic energy, but it's like, sometimes you feel that from a person and you're like, I could not put my finger on what that is, except to say that like you have really intensely evil energy. I mean, you wouldn't say that to their face, but you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, I do. I, well, you know what? So like, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not really, I love all that stuff, but I'm mostly like into energies and stuff. So I would be like, there's a dark energy coming from there demon and demonic i don't like to say that sort of stuff only because i grew up catholic and Mm -hmm. so like my grandma scared the shit out of me when i was little she'd be like you know don't say that sort of stuff and you're little attracted and i don't know like i think all the folklore and warning tales as uh as a kid in the latino family just end up messing with your head in a negative Uh. way so (laughs) that's a different story though (laughs) are you still catholic no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. We talked a lot about Catholicism this weekend because, you know, it was Easter this past weekend. Yes. And one of my friends went to a Catholic high school, like an all boys Catholic high school. And so there was a lot of talk about sort of like, what is the role of gays in Catholicism now? Like, you know, he has a friend who's who's queer, but is studying to be a priest. Really? And my friend was like, I think that that, you know, there is no version of acting within this system. Anyway, very interesting conversations. But Oh, my God. No, totally up my alley as well, just because I definitely grew up Catholic, grew up conflicted with that. I am a queer person. I am gay. And it's the reason that I stray away from religion these days, just because of the way that I was treated growing up. And like I had a best friend who wanted to be a priest as well. And then I didn't speak to him for like five or six years, uh, not for anything like specific we were just like kids that moved away and and then so when I met up with him later in life he was I was like oh my god do you like you still want to be a priest and it was like a different person and he's like no I don't like what you don't know is like 
I actually was like sexually molested by my priest. And like, there was a class action lawsuit. Like there was like five victims in my church. And like, so he's like, I don't believe anything that was spoon fed to me. And I was like, Oh my God. Like basically like it just like killed his spirit. Like I knew him as yeah. a specific person. And then I met him again and he was like a broken adult. It was so sad. Oh my God. That's really distressing. And I, I mean, also part of what's tragic is that it's like, that's not a totally unpopular story, right? Like exactly. that's not an unheard of situation. Anyway, it, not, not to not to bring down the convo, but <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, so you said like the uh, I read that the movie took five days to shoot, and I read that you said they were the greatest five days of your life. Yeah. And obviously, like we know why, but I want to hear it from you. Like, what was? I think for me to be performing that hard every single day for 10 to 12 hours a day like nothing feels more fulfilling um or more enlivening it's that thing like getting home at the end of the day and being bone tired and knowing that you're gonna get up the next day and keep working like that is so gratifying to me which I, I think to most performers, it's like, that doesn't sound crazy. I just love singing and dancing so much. And I love acting so much that to get to like, I mean, I, obviously it's like, I think using the phrase like acting hard is definitely not the right, the <laughs> right thing to use. But you know, it's like you're doing everything so intensely and it was just so fun. You did fabulous, Sophie. Like you did so great. Like obviously it runs in your family. Like your mom is Bette Midler. I know that I read that she loved the film and that she thought it was fantastic. And then she was mostly like, I want the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the silver uh, sequin outfit, like the very beginning, like I could oh, it's not, so uh, it's so good. And obviously you look just like your mom. So I couldn't help but think about her. And I was like, she looks just like her. She sounds just like her. I think it's interesting. I think in that first number in the silver in the silver outfit, I was like, oh, wow, I do actually look a lot like her and sound like her. But I think as the film goes on, that changes a lot. Like totally. I think you start to see all these other elements of Sissy that have nothing to do with Bette Midler. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, to me, it's like a love letter to, to any performer who has ever, God, just like wanted so badly to quote unquote make it, right? Like that's yeah. sort of what the whole movie is about. I love it. I love it. At the end of the day, it's all, like it goes back to like being seen, being heard, yeah. being loved. Like, please love me, audience. Take me. I want to be famous. I loved it. I love the monologues. Like, I love the monologue by the window. Um, I love the letters. Like, when you were pulling out the letters, it yeah. gave me very much Saturday Night Special because they used to do that. So fabulous to see. But I feel like you're also not a stranger to like dressing up, right? Like you love to go and dress up every once in a while. Oh my God. I love getting dressed up in costumes, just in my regular clothes. Like I sometimes feel like everything I wear kind of looks like a costume, which is not really true. It's like often, obviously I'm in jeans and a t-shirt, but like if there is an excuse for me to put on like, I don't know, some weird onesie pantsuit, I'm going to be in it. <laughs> I have to ask you, cause I, no, you went to the Met Gala. You went for the camp theme. You went with your mom. I, I I mostly want to ask about the inside of the Met Gala. What happens in there? Like, do people eat? Do they talk to each other? Checking it out each other's outfits? Like, what happens in there? It's such a, it's so amazing. I feel really, really honored that I've gotten to go. Like, it's so, it's one of those things that I never in my wildest dreams thought would happen. And I think my mom honestly feels the same. I think we were both like, wait, we're invited, <laughs> what? Um, but everybody is, I think because you're in such an incredible, vast space, and you, you know, the only people there are the people who are at the gala. It feels like everybody has a real sense of how special the occasion is. It's not that it's formal, but it's like everybody is there, is is kind of there for the event. As in like there for it in the whatever the contemporary phrase is. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. here for it. Like that. Um, but Is there food? There is food. You are seated at tables oh. and there's a performance. Yeah. So oh, it's, wow. it's tables. It's seated. There's a performance. I definitely ate. I don't know if everybody else eats. 
Some of those dresses, I think it's like hard to even eat a half a chicken. I was going to say, like, some people are dressed so crazy. I don't even know how they would sit down, let alone like pick up a fork and eat. I mean, I would eat no matter what. I mean, it's also really fun to watch people sort of like navigate how to sit in certain outfits. Like Katy Perry wore a chandelier. It's like, how the fuck do you sit down in that? You know, so all of that stuff. And it's it, it was it was really fun and really, really special. That's so cool. Uh, goals to go to the Met Gala for I sure. Know, truly. Goals to went, get back there sometime. <laughs> right. And you went for like one of the best ones. That camp theme was super controversial. What is camp to you? Oh, camp to me is... Give me pity. Oh, give me pity is ultimate high camp for sure. Yeah. Thank you for filling in my answer for me. Thank you for filling in the (laughs) blank. I appreciate it. Don't put me on the spot like that. What is camp? Like, are you ready just to like to jump in more into the singing and dancing thing? All of the above. Um, (laughs) I mean definitely yes like I'm so happy that I got to sing and dance and just to sort of rip off that band-aid and be like oh right this is something that I love to do um I it was so exciting to me to work on a film that did have that sort of more avant-garde element like working on something that felt weird and really special was really exciting to me so I'm excited for that and then at the same time of course I'm like yes I'll take whatever comes I just want to be working and then yeah. I know COVID affected the shooting of the schedule and you shot it a year later. Was it kind of like, you know, I like COVID messed up so many things for so many people. And yeah. obviously it was like such a bad time in everyone's lives. And did it feel like, man, what the F? Like I was just ready to do this. Oh, I mean, it, it, it was, I like couldn't acknowledge how upset I was because I was like, if I even start, if I even start tackling the fact that we're not going to make this movie, I'm just going to fall apart at the seams. I'm like, I'm just going to cry for th- three months on end. And also like, yeah, there are way worse things going on in the world than the fact that like, I don't get to make this movie right now. Yes. <laughs> so I think it was like trying, of course, to keep everything in perspective while also just trying to be like, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. So then when we actually got to shoot it, it was also such a release for me of just like, oh my God, we're here and we're doing this thing that we've, that we're meant to do. You know, it felt very like Bashert. Absolutely. I love that. Um, I actually got to work during the pandemic on a sitcom. So I felt super blessed to like actually work during the pandemic. It was super hard. Um, you know, I just feel like I got to that level where I can be in the rooms that I, uh, you know, have dreamt about being in and then COVID hit and like, it's like, okay, I get to go into the rooms with no feedback and just self tapes. And isn't it so, so crazy? I miss like, uh, live feedback so much. I was at a show last night and I ran into this casting director and he was like, I'm trying to bring rooms back. Like, you know, I miss just being in a casting room with people. I'm like, me too. Me too. I'm just like, I need feedback. Like they want me to get the part. Yes. Like they want us to do well. So, like, part of that, I was really relying on that. Like, once I got to that level where, like, the auditions were super important, the roles could change my life. And, like, now there's no feedback. I'm looking into, like, a camera, like, or, like, my webcam. It's it's definitely not the same. So, praying and hoping yeah. that we'll get back to the back into the rooms and, like, hopefully me and you get to work together. Would that be fun? Wait, what was the sitcom that you were working on? Oh, I did a little uh, sitcom on Netflix called Pretty Smart, and um, it was a great experience, but it was also, like, um, just, like, one of those things, you know what I mean, where they're, like, we love you, I auditioned for the lead role, and then, like, they got a star name instead, and then, so, like, you're gonna be the best friend, and they're, like, oh, do you do drag, and I was, like, no, I don't do drag, but I'm, like, willing to do drag, because, you know, I love drag, so, like, why not, I'll do it, Yeah. and they're, like, okay, okay, well, we want a real drag queen, so you'll just be the friend of the drag queen. And then, like, it just started. Oh. I yeah. Eventually, like, I went from like auditioning to the lead role, you know, to like just like a couple lines. Like, isn't it, it that thing? It's like this. This uh, is there are a million different ways. It's that's a million different ways to break your heart. I mean, a million, it is every, a fucking million. It's just it's a really. Why do we do this to ourselves? Episode. Because there's nothing more fun in the entire world when you actually get to do the thing. That's why, which is so, it's it's sick and it's crazy, but here we are. It's like, I wouldn't, there's nothing else I would rather be doing with my life. Nothing. <laughs> I know. I, I read that you were 
uh, working at an ad agency. Like, I think it was China, right? You were in China? Yeah, yeah. I was living in Shanghai working for an ad agency. Yeah, I read that you were like, I can't do this. And then, like, you went and, like, did a monologue and you were like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, I was like, oh, this, it, it, I was having, I mean, actually, like we were just talking about of sort of like energies and stuff like that. I was having these really intense fantasies, like daydreams that I couldn't get out of my head of just daydreams of being an actor. And eventually I was like, okay, to shut these voices up, I've got to just do something about it. And it, it, I mean, to me, it felt like a version of fate where I was like, oh, this is what I was always meant to do and what I always wanted to do. It just took a Absolutely. lot to admit it to myself. I love that you're, I don't know. I just like everything you're saying. I'm like, yes, yes. I feel like we're just like <laughs> kindred spirits. Like, I just totally agree with you. Um, it's so funny just because a couple years ago, I was like in this dark place and I, I really didn't know like what to do. And it's, it is beshared. It is faith. I was like asking for a sign from up above from the greater good and i was saying just give me a sign that i'm supposed to do this please just give me one sign that this is what i meant to do that night i met sj aloko oh my god <gasps> at a mariah oh, carey concert and she's like are you an actor because you're hilarious and funny and i want to put you on tape <laughs> oh my god oh that's that is so and it's also like sometimes you're just so down in the dumps about, I mean, you know, this business, it's it's really hard and it can be really depressing. And like sometimes you're so down in the dumps, you really do need a sign from up above. I remember walking through Central Park crying. Like New York City has millions of people in it, but it can make you feel so alone, oh, like yeah. so quickly. And I just remember walking through Central Park crying, going, give me a sign, please. <laughs> and then that night she's like, oh my God, like, you would be so good on girls. And I'm like, it's my favorite show. And she like, you just need something to tell something. you to keep fucking going. <laughs> and I love that it was SJ. That's so great. And she's such like a light. I mean, she's such a luminous, fabulous being. She's a rare find. Uh, one of my dearest and closest friends. Um, Sophie, thank you so much for doing this. You're incredible. Like I had such a good time watching your your film and thank you for doing this. I really appreciate you giving us your thank time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really sorry that I couldn't bring more of like the Bravo-ness. That was Are you probably, kidding me? Do not apologize. <laughs> this was about talking to you. This was about highlighting um, your role of a lifetime, which like we could thank all you. just hope and pray for something so cool to fall in our laps like that like i want to do a singing and dancing saturday night special are you kidding me yeah but the good news is you're writing your own which like what could be better than that <laughs> that's true that's, that's true and honestly it gave me a lot of um inspiration so thank you for your art i really appreciate that thank you shout thank out you to amanda kramer um amanda you're awesome Guys, thank you so much for listening to the pod. I know that this year has been brand spanking new, and I appreciate all the downloads and you guys coming right back to me. I know it took a little hiatus, and the love that you guys have given me is truly so rewarding. Thank you for all the messages. If you're on Spotify, you can see us. So um, <gasps> go listen to Spotify because you can see okay. us. Okay. Can I just say that you did not tell me that this was going to be videoed. I mean, thank <laughs> God I put on a little bit of eyeliner beforehand. I would have had better lighting. I'm just thrilled people are listening to you and your, um, your fabulous podcast. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for joining us. You can find me on Instagram at Sophie von Hasselberg. And I have a podcast called Having a Night which is dedicated to reviving the lost art of the dinner party. So it's me and my friend Ari Venturi, and we just sit and talk about eating and drinking, and we usually get drunk while we record, and it's really, really fun. So <laughs> tune in. I'm Hollywood Leon. It's my favorite day of the week, and we'll see you next time, terrible kids. Bye. Bye.